Now we have with us uh, Shri K L N Murthy, a herpetologist, conservation biologist, and the founder of Eastern Ghats Welfare Society. Actually, this society has been doing a lot of workshops with the department, a lot of snake rescues and awareness programs in the surrounding and in the areas of coastal Andhra Pradesh. Uh, so we have a lot to do with them. We will be doing a lot of work with them in future as well. So over to you, Mr. Murthy. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, can everyone hear me? I can see the everyone can is... hear you, Murti, but uh, we can't see you. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> right. We are you are visible. Yeah, uh, I'm looking for an option where I can present. It still shows Abhijit sir is presenting. You have an option of present now, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, can you see my presentation now? Not yet. It's coming. Yes. Now? Yeah. Yeah, make it full screen. And you're good to go. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my special thanks to PCCF Sir, uh, CCF Sirs, and uh, Curator Ma'am for organizing this amazing webinar on snakes. Uh, thanks to Forest Department. They have been super supportive for all our activities. Now, uh, now, uh, the, this webinar is really important because it sheds light on some of the most misunderstood animals uh, across the world, and they are snakes. So, uh, <clears throat> just to uh, look at the Eastern Ghats ranges, uh, they are uh, a discontinuous patch of hill ranges which are spread across five uh, Indian states along the east coast of India. Um, King cobras, they are the largest venomous snakes in the world, um, but despite their size, they are pretty much shy and afraid of humans. Uh, they always try to escape given a chance. Um, they are found in different habitat types, also predominantly feed on other snakes, and that makes them very special because uh, they help control the population of other venomous and non-venomous snakes in the area. Uh, so it's also categorized as vulnerable by IUCN. It's also protected under the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Now, uh, I heard about king cobras back in 1998 my, when my uncle was working at Vizag Zoo as an educator. And uh, my senior colleague, Mr. Rajkumar, late Rajkumar, uh, who started the Friends of Snakes Society in Hyderabad also told me that king cobras existed uh, in Vijayanagaram district of Andhra Pradesh back then. And uh, I uh, was always curious about them. And after doing my master's and uh, undergoing some training programs abroad, I came back and started studying them. And incidentally, we found that king cobras are spread across the four districts, pretty much East Godavari, Vishakapatnam, Srikakulam, Vijayanagaram. And uh, we got some good records. Unfortunately, we stumbled across uh, uh, dead specimens, but we still had that record of the snake from those locations. We published in some uh, uh, newsletters, as you can see. So these are some of the locality records of king cobras from other districts of uh, Andhra Pradesh. Eastern Guards Wildlife Society is a nonprofit. Uh, we are a grassroots level nonprofit, and uh, we believe engaging multiple stakeholders in conservation of lesser known species like the king cobra, or some of the reptiles Abhijit sir was uh, mentioning about, uh, is really key because there are charismatic species, they get a lot of support, fine, but then there are also these lesser known species that need protection. Uh, so these are th these are our uh, team members from Vishakapatnam district alone. We have a snake rescue network from other districts of the state, as well as from uh, uh, the neighboring state of Odisha. So uh, all these are locally based uh, snake rescuers who can attend a snake rescue if required in no time. 
So how do we rescue, uh, how, how do we basically plan our conservation programs, uh, saving these king cobras in the Eastern Ghats? So the conservation action planning aimed at reducing the threats to wildlife. This is key. And how do we do that is first by assessing the threats to an animal. Is it habitat specific threats? Is it species specific threats? Threats like, like what we do address the threats. Um, so these sites, horrific sites, like what you see in this picture is pretty common and it's still there as we speak in uh, pretty much across the country, except in Agumbe or certain sections of uh, uh, Western Ghats. So people kill snakes and King Cobra, of course, it stands out. It's a big snake and people will kill it looking at it due to fear. Most of it is perceived fear because bites from a King Cobra are very rare, while thousands of people die from uh, venomous snake bites. Cobra, crate, like PCCF have said, crate, we have Russell's Viper and common cobra. So these guys, king cobras feed on those big four snakes and uh, they are directly helping our communities. So the thing is to get this message across and one of the main threats, our data also shows that people kill snakes unnecessarily and it's going at an alarming rate. And these reptile populations as uh, uh, our previous speaker mentioned, they don't move much and they're pretty much vulnerable to local extirpation if not uh, these threats are not addressed. Um, so this person who is uh, right there uh, holding the tail of the snake to the right side, he assisted the other person in killing the snake. But let me tell you, a month ago around in the last week of May, that very person who was holding the tail of the snake called us and we could save a huge bigger than this for 14 foot king cobra in the same village. So this took us time to reach this level. This was this picture was taken three years ago and we started working there. Um, and then uh, the road kills, we also documented road kills as one of the main threats, but we still don't know. We don't have quantifiable data to uh, make any statements. So these are potential threats as we know it and disease. We have had some uh, king cobras which just died they haven't had any apparent injuries on the body or uh, hit marks, uh, wounds, nothing. So, and, and as you can see, this, this snake is young, but it's skinny, uh, haven't had food for weeks, but we don't know where this is where scientists can actually help us getting these uh, reasons and what kind of diseases these snakes might be facing. Uh, so generally speaking, some general threats like loss of habitat that hampers all the programs that we do and it also endangers not just snakes but several other species of uh, wildlife reduced habitat quality that's because of uh, the uh, exotic plantations and uh, agricultural intensification as you can see uh, in the background it's a pristine king cobra habitat and in the foreground there is this human dominated landscape uh, and it also poor land use management is driving these snakes into human dominated landscapes in search of other snakes. For instance, rat snakes and cobras, they become permanent residents in farmlands because they get plenty of rats and food, uh, like shelter. So they become permanent residents and king cobras follow other snakes. And that's when an encounter is likely to happen. Now, uh, inspiring surrounding communities to take wildlife saving actions, it's very difficult to accomplish this because uh, rescuing an animal is just a temporary solution to a bigger problem. People are killing snakes because they perceive them as threat. Their security is at uh, stake and why not? As PCC have said, thousands of them are getting killed. So the key is to provide on the ground solutions to these people empathize with them, and that's the way to engage them in conservation. Most of the conservationists today, they plan their programs, thinking about the welfare of the species they advocate for, and uh, without even thinking or you know incorporating the principles and needs of uh, the local communities who share the living space with these deadly animals. Uh, so our idea is, to hit a win-win situation where the local communities learn to live harmoniously with king cobras and we have this wildlife 
on one side, people on the other side, harmoniously living. So it's uh, the, the trend has also been changing. It's not about conservation in protected areas anymore. It's about coexistence because as you know, three to 4% of uh, India's total geographical area is legally protected. And as managers, uh, people would know how difficult that is. And what about the unprotected areas, these human dominated landscapes, buffer zones. So it's from protection in reserves to harmonious coexistence is what is the trend that's been shifting right now. Uh, so uh, I, I still remember Rom telling me that most king cobras, they are very shy, they escape, but some are really aggressive. They stand their ground and attack. And this one, uh, uh, this 13 foot huge male uh, that we rescued from a multiple use area and, uh, and uh, released it into a nearby reserve forest gave us uh, a tough time while handling and putting it. But still, given a chance, a snake would always try to escape. The idea was to bag it safely without using tongs or any crude methods and uh, release it safely back in the wild, away from these areas where humans frequent a lot. Um, so, uh, so it all boils down to individual actions, whether it's curbing coronavirus or saving snakes, individual actions from people, individual, the local communities, the stakeholders, the, the, the local people, so we can only accomplish that with behavior change campaigns. And it's not possible in a day or two. Awareness is excellent. It's the first step to start any program, but it isn't going to help when there is no behavior change. And uh, so all of our programs, we also have this dimension of understanding how best we can uh, tailor a, a, and design our programs to change behavior of human beings and then encourage them to take wildlife friendly actions. For instance, not killing a snake or leaving it alone or call us, you don't have to kill it. And it's happening as we can see uh, uh, certain communities in Vishakhapatnam where we had been working uh, are now not killing king cobras. They are watching them from a distance. They are also sending us photographs and videos of uh, the king cobras leaving, uh, which we, feel, we really feel happy about it. The increasing tolerance is a very good sign, but there is a long, long way ahead. And uh, this is happening as we speak. Spreading actionable messages. Now, uh, there are uh, very, very specific, specific messages that we would like to uh, convey to our target audience. For instance, this uh, signage, which is at uh, Chodavaram Range Office in Vishakhapatnam, uh, it has a specific purpose. It isn't a conventional educational signage or an awareness board with interesting facts. It has a specific purpose. It only says, if you see a king cobra, don't kill it, call us. And we have the DF force number, the range officer, and our number, so they can call any of these and we'll come and rescue it. So we are always giving a viable, more secure option for the local communities and telling them not to kill snake, but to call us. You don't have to keep the snake. You don't have to kill the snake. Call us, we come and rescue it. So this is our first step towards uh, mitigating the conflict and hitting a harmonious relationship. Um, so Rom uh, and I met in Netherlands a few years ago where he uh, pitched uh, this idea of doing a documentary called Living with King. The Gaia people developed this documentary. It talks about uh, the local communities in the Western Ghats uh, who are uh, able to coexist harmoniously with the King Cobras. And they are basically benefiting from that behavior. They are not afraid of King Cobras. If they see a King Cobra, they call for help and Basically, the venomous snake bite incidents have also reduced in the locality. So it's something what we say as social learning and human behavior. When these local communities are telling their counterparts uh, about the benefits of adopting this behavior, then the chances of adopting the new behavior by the, by the communities in Eastern Guards or elsewhere across the King Cobra range are fairly high because it's their counterparts. It's not... A conservationist, it's not some herpetologist saying, but it's one community member conveying the message to another community member. So this you can see on YouTube. You can also hit the link. You can just type living with the king and you'll get the documentary. It's a short film. Um, then institutional capacity building, local community capacity building, more importantly, institutional capacity building. These forest officers, they lay their life on the line to protect these forests. They, they face these 
dangerous snakes, highly venomous snakes. And so we feel that building their capacity is really important, not for their own personal security, but also to manage snake bites pretty well. As Rom and uh, PCC have sir, mentioned, uh, it's a serious problem and we need more hands on the deck to accomplish that. So we have conducted numerous workshops, training, uh, and this was the idea of uh, the CCF Wildlife Rahul sir, to start a uh, training program for all the frontline staff of uh, the forest department on various aspects of snake rescue and uh, snake bite management. So, uh, so this is uh, uh, we are also we have also given this equipment, the snake rescue equipment, to zookeepers and field staff. It, and these resources, field guides, identification guides that they could use back in the field when they go out. Um, and then last year, with the support from the DFO Vishakapatnam, we had also conducted the first ever uh, King Cobra Conservation Workshop. And that's for field forest officers of the cadre of ACF range officer and all of them. Uh, the basic idea was to sensitize them about king cobras, the benefits of having them around, and the fact that they're very shy snake and the bites from king cobras are really rare. So, uh, so most of them, like from four to five districts along the coastal Andhra Pradesh, pe uh, forest officers have attended it. They benefited from the materials, the films we have shown, the presentations and inputs. Uh, well, that isn't uh, a real king cobra. It's uh, a depiction of a king cobra nest that our team conceptualized for uh, the Vijayanagaram Forest Division because the idea, as Abhijit sir said, it's a unique snake, perhaps the only snake in the world that builds a nest. And uh, we, we also specialize in doing such 3D models and dioramas that show, that talk about local wildlife and uh, interesting facts about uh, the, the wildlife, the lesser known wildlife especially, and the importance of uh, saving these amazing animals. So, and we always work with the best, uh, as you can see, Rom Viteker visited our uh, field site back in 2018. Uh, we take regular inputs from them and uh, we, feel, we feel really honored to be working with these people. Uh, just to put a glimpse in 2019, needless to say, corona-free world, we could do a lot of work, uh, and this is a glimpse of what we did, our impact in uh, 2019. In numbers, you can always look back after the slides. I don't know how much time I still got, but I'm just flipping through. We also work with this. These are all of our supporting organizations, local, international as well, and partners. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone. Stay safe and happy Snake Day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Murthy. It's good to see such young people oriented towards conservation, that too of snakes. It's really good. And we are really uh, fortunate to have you around. And let's work together for the snake conservation.